Let's then start with our very first question. Where do L&D people come from? And Danny, I'm going to I'm going to ask you, what is your origin story? Well, um, I think a lot of people may have similar stories when it comes to uh, our career in L&D. I started working um, many years ago on the customer service uh, industry and you sort of came into training because you were probably good at the technical or the operational part of the of the of the work. Um, I continued to be working in operations on customer service and on the technology part of, of businesses. I continued to be um, appointed as a leader and then as a people manager, always having a participation in training that was going on. I was always like the training focal, um, and but it was also an operations uh, manager. And I remember that even though I loved uh, all the years that I worked as a, as a people manager, uh, every time I had to do training for onboarding or for new leaders, uh, it would be like probably my favorite part uh, of, of the work. Um, but I kept on doing operations because I did very well in it. But I probably didn't recognize it back in the moment, but my passion was on that, on, on, on going into training rooms, on designing things, on seeing what were the uh, needs that uh, that a a group or a team could could have. Um, until eventually, uh, the the learning and development part just started. I had to add more time to it, more time to it, until I made the decision to do a career change. And you know what? I'm just going to do this uh, full time. Um, and then, so I sort of stumbled upon it, and I think it happens to a lot of people. You're really good at the technical part of a job that you have. People come to you. I think that is a very uh, interesting sign of people that do uh, or, or learning and develop practitioners. One of the early symptoms that this is your uh, uh, probably your career uh, path to say somehow is that people come to you with questions or people like for you to explain things to them. Um, and that, that was kind of like how it started. So I started off in operations. I kept on doing operations, but always having a learning and development sort of similar path until one day I said, listen, I need to do this full time because it's just what it makes sense. And the impact that I have uh, or I could have on a team or an organization from a uh, learning and development perspective was probably bigger than just managing a team of, of, of 10 people. Um, so I started doing uh, consulting in learning and development. I also got my uh, coach uh, certification, which complemented the learning and development career very nicely, I believe. And um, that is what I do up until today. I do consulting for learning and development and I do career coaching uh, for people who want to change careers. But because of pandemic, uh, I started doing a lot of unemployed people and helping them uh, how to prepare for interviews and how to get jobs. And lately, there's been, and we'll probably talk about it later on, there's gonna be, uh, there's been people wanting to change careers to go into learning and development, but I think we'll talk about that a bit later. Oh, we definitely will, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, it's very interesting because in my experience, um, there are really two paths or two origin stories, let's call them, into L&D. And what you've just described is kind of the typical one where people join a company um, in whatever role and then in one way or another, they get in touch with L&D, they come in contact with L&D, usually through trainings, um, ironically, mm -hmm. but they love it so much and they decide, yeah, that's, that's the path for me. Um, and it's exactly the same story with me. I... Ironically, I wanted to go into marketing right after graduating university. That wasn't in the cards for me. So I was like, you know what? I just need to start somewhere. Um, and I ended up working as a customer services agent. Literally a few months uh, down the line, there was a position that opened up for a customer services trainer. And I just remember some of the most fond memories are those very first weeks when I joined the company and we had like a two week onboarding. And I remember the guy um, delivering that training who many years later ended up being my manager and my mentor. But I just thought, oh my God, 
that dude's job is awesome. I want it. <laughs> How do I get it? <laughs> um, and so the moment that seed is sort of planted in your mind, I think it almost becomes inevitable. Um, so yeah, the rest as they say is history. So that's definitely one of those paths. But uh, back in 2018, um, I designed my first course, Introduction to Learning and Development. I posted it on Udemy. Um, and right now it has, I think, somewhere between 10,000 students. And one of the things that I always ask them to do is to introduce themselves. Once they started the course, tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, tell me why you're here, what is it that you want to learn more about? And over and over and over again, I get the second type of origin story for L&D, and those are teachers. High school mm -hmm. teachers or language teachers or any kind of teachers that have to do with children education. Uh, for one reason, I mean, I, I think we can probably all um, agree on at least a couple of reasons why they would want to move away from teaching. but they want to go into the corporate world. They want to transfer their skills in teaching into learning and development. Um, and I personally find that absolutely amazing and absolutely fantastic because it can be quite a jump, I think. Um, I, mm -hmm. I personally don't have any experience with uh, teaching children, or I would say I have very limited <laughs> experience with teaching children. Uh, but it seems like these are roughly the two categories of people. You have people who from internally, like you and I, kind of ended up in L&D, got that spark going and ended up and did everything that we could. And then you have the other category of, uh, you know, people who want to go into L&D, usually from some sort of teaching positions. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I know that we've talked about this before. Uh, you've also had some experiences with those types of people, haven't you? Yes, I, I as a career coach um, during the sessions, again, we've it's very interesting and this could be a, just a bit off, off topic, but it's still very interesting. And it is a, a lot of people come for their coaching sessions to do change of, 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 of jobs, um, usually to find probably a job that pays more or that. But during pandemic, something happened to all of us during pandemic and then people started coming having very stable jobs, good, you know, well paid, uh, but the, for whatever reason, they were just not happy anymore. They were not feeling fulfilled. They were maybe working from home, maybe, I don't know exactly what happened. It's just different for everyone. But um, I didn't have that many uh, teachers coming in. And then in the last uh, few months, I've started having uh basically a couple of preschool teachers and then a couple of elementary school teachers that have decided that they just don't want to do this anymore. I think the probably the change from doing, you know, a year or something on remote teaching and then going back to the classroom, something sort of happened and some of them are deciding, you know what, maybe I want to do something different, which is great for L&D because these people, uh, first of all, they're used to dealing with children and how challenging can that be? My goodness, I don't know how they do it. I know. Um, <laughs> You know, and then they bring a lot of uh, knowledge uh, that they get from, you know, university into uh, the L&D part. So some of us had to sort of learn as we went and we learned to to design and to do learning needs analysis and things Um you know, a bit on the way, these people come with a bit more, uh, more of a, of a background, maybe lacking or feeling insecure about their corporate, uh, um, environment, maybe not having a lot of experience in that. And that's where the coaching a little bit, you know, comes in, 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 in helping them how they will adjust to that. But it's, it is, it is becoming very common and it wasn't two or three years ago. Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree based on, again, my observations over who, comes into the online courses on learning and development. Uh, but one question that I always get is, can I make that switch from like teaching children to teaching adults? And first of all, any, everyone can do anything they want. But specifically when it comes to teaching children, um, I think that if you can wrangle a classroom of 20, 30 children, you should have mm. no problem <laughs> doing the same with adults. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely. Again, I may be speaking Absolutely. from inexperience, uh, but I feel like if you can do that for children, that's probably way more difficult <laughs> than adults. And it's interesting because one of the things that we work on on, on coaching for, for these professionals is, you know, what we try to leave out the, and it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated to think of, but 
um, let's not think about children as you know to do this transition into adult uh, or to do corporate training let's just think about what are the needs of the learner let's just call them learners because otherwise people tend to think that because they work with children uh, or even you know preschoolers how do I do that jump well it's people want to learn whether they're kids or they're adults and when we focus on that you apply all the experience that you have into this new you know kind of population and 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 at the end of the day the 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 result is the same as a learning and development person you get satisfaction on seeing people learning whether they're a five-year-old or a 65-year-old person in a, in a in a corporation it's it's more or less the same the feeling oh absolutely absolutely no that that is that is an amazing topic by the way for everyone watching us live or watching the recording let us know down in the comments how did you end up in L&D what is your origin story because again I love using that phrase origin story because again, it does make us sound like superheroes and I absolutely think LNDs are the unspoken <laughs> superheroes. 